So you love Marvel Champions, the card game, and even though it's not a terribly arduous process to get a game set up, it still doesn't seem to be hitting the table as much as you'd like. Or you're just fed up of all the sorting, the min-maxing, the finickiness of it all. You just want to pick up a pre-constructed deck that's not as dire as the ones each hero pack comes with and have at it. Well, then you're in luck, dear viewer, because this is the guide to building your own plug-and-play aggression decks that will get you into the fray toot sweet. What we'll be trying to achieve over the course of the next few minutes is to go through a couple of sample decks in two different themes, but also highlight what actually makes a good aggression deck so you can tweak the list we provide to accommodate the cards in your collection. As you may be aware, most signature decks have a variety of different tools in their kit, but aspect cards are there to deliver on a fairly linear game plan. And for aggression, that means pursuing the primary win condition of dealing enough damage to defeat the villain. Your two lost cons of threatening out or saying hello to zero health are by the by. It's generally a race to victory rather than the battle of attrition for our red bordered cards. So to the themes, the decks, the lists of cards. And in the blue corner we have the prototypical event heavy deck, where direct damage cards are your best friend. And then in the red corner is the let's wield weapons and turn our identity sideways to maximum effect. Two quite diverse themes that both stay true to aggression. For our first sample deck we're looking at the Aventorama build. And we start with allies. For aggression you're normally looking for a handful. Here we have four, which if you add the obligatory signature ally leaves us with five in a deck, which is just about right. Aggression isn't necessarily about battlefield buddies, but you're never sad to play one, and for such a front foot aspect it's not the worst thing to have a handful of sacrificial lambs ready to take one for the team. Braun is part of the team because he does some dirty work, middle in damage but threat removal and a big pool of HP to keep him trucking. Sunfire is one of the better tech cards out there that can deal with those pesky villain attachments and bring in an average body to the table as well. And Thor is inherent value with all the physical resources we're bringing. And we're also dusting off the Marvel Gandalf Nick Fury because utility is as utility does. I should say at this point that there is a great deal of flexibility in your ally choices. They're arguably the least relevant to whatever deck archetype you're going for, so don't go out and buy hero packs just for these cards, because A, we could bring in some more in the other list that you may have access to and will be able substitutes, and B, like I said, pick your faves from your collection and bung them in. You will not unbalance your deck. And now we get to the fun stuff. The reason we're all here is to throw events at enemies both large and small. Clobber and Dropkick commence proceedings, and the former you bring in because as long as you've got your sequencing pants on is good value. And that one resource for three damage isn't particularly inspiring, but it is particularly synergistic. And Dropkick in a list with ample physical resources to hand is delish. Damage, stunnage, and card draw in one super sexy package. No quarter and piercing strike round out the red bordered events, with the former giving you little trouble in meeting the physical requirements and giving you no reason to regret excess damage. Seriously, this card will always be at least average and often when facing a minion or an about to be advanced villain, absolutely bonkers. And the latter, well, piercing is always nice to have on hand. So many scenarios will see you benefit from removing tough statuses, so jobs are good. Again, don't panic if you don't have access to all these cards. What you're looking for is just straight efficiency and payout for your resource cost. Even the most vanilla average card of all time, Uppercut, can do work if that's what you've got access to. Upgrade time then and combat training is the ablest of this type of card across the aspects. Anything that speeds up access to your win con is a keeper. Home technique is a funky resource requirement but with mental showing up on plenty of our other choices this shouldn't be too much of a hardship and the payoff more than makes up for any stress this card causes you. Then leaving upgrade town with martial prowess is about as obvious a choice as we could muster. 
not just giggity rampage, but of the physical variety as well. I say yes please and thank you. And that leaves us with the supports and resources, which will see me repeating myself throughout this series of videos, as every single one of these decks has the triumvirate of energy, genius and strength. Because, well, Tufas are cool. And secondly, whenever your aspect cards predominantly cost two or more, then power of aggression or equivalent for each aspect is likely to be an auto-include. And to sign off, you'll more often than not see me espousing the inclusion of a heli carrier if you're not an Avenger, or the superior Quinn carrier if you are. Also, because a lot of one-size-fits-all advice is given more aligned to the perspective of a solo player, even a card like Avengers Mansion might be good in this slot when you're playing multiplayer. So that's one deck down, but you want you some weapons, because that's what the man promised. And so let's get this hacky slashy started. Ally-wise, you'll still have my earlier advice ringing in your ears. Pick what you like and go at it. For me, and bear in mind I picked a completely different pool of allies than the other list because these are all one-offs in your collection and I wanted two plug and play decks ready to go. But what this happy accident will do is give you a broader idea then of what's out there. Bug is up first, he might be less inspiring than Brawn, but what he does do is finish off minions, have an option for chip threat removal and he sticks around like a good smell because you will be basic attacking every round. And then when he needs to take a hit to save your identity from a good thwacking, he's there for you too. Marvel Boy is here for the piercing, and he's not the only tech card to deal with tough statuses, so you can swing the axe like a winner. Trust me, you don't want to sleep on piercing or status removal here. Psylocke is there to protect you from threatening out, and for when you need your alter ego more than the average bear. If you look at this card in a certain light or from a certain angle, there's not much to see, but unpick what it can do for you, especially if you're a low HP identity, and you realise the payoff is swishdy. Wolverine isn't shy about taking two consequential damage, but gives you back with the above average three damage, and the I like to heal every turn ability. If this ain't a potent aggression ally, then I don't know what is. Now because this is a weppy deck, I can only defer the upgrade choices for so long. And so, somewhat out of order, we have a full playset of hand cannons, because consistency is key, and then we have a hand meat glove copy of combat training. So hand cannon is your bread and butter, exhaust it, it gives you extra damage and a splash of overkill for when you need it. Enough said. And combat training you want to see early game because, well, uh, return on investment? One of both the grandiosely named Godslayer and the Godfather of Weapon Decks, Yarnbjorn, are up next. Godslayer, you're not too sad, it's unique because it can only attack the villain and unique minions, so it's fairly linear in that regard. But the earlier you do get that plus two to your attack on the table, the more marvellous it becomes. And while Yarn Beyond barely needs an introduction because this is like having a zero cost card that does two damage to an enemy of your choice on tap, as you'll have no trouble in finding physical resources in this deck. One thing I will say about these upgrades though is that there aren't many alternatives, because the basic weapon cards are inferior and not worth building around. So sorry and all that, but you might need to pony up here. But this isn't a deck all about the upgrades, because we're still packing 9 complementary events that look like playsets of Fusillade, Mean Swing and Skilled Strike. Which stays left, giving you value for money providing you're exhausting Yarn Beyond, which is the only one that can cope with exhausting without throwing a strop. But still, synergy. Similarly, Mean Swing is super sweet with your Asgardian weapon of choice, and Skilled Strike doesn't care what's in your hands. You're getting plus two attack for the cost of the card itself, and being happy when you do it. Those last two cards especially mean that two copies of Power of Aggression might be overkill, so swapping one out for Audacity may well save your bacon. Remember, we said tough statuses on villains is a sad panda waiting to happen. Well, Audacity solves that problem for you without breaking a sweat. 
The trio, basics and your ramp card of choice round out the deck and that there is a weapon heavy aggression deck for all to behold. So as I've already mentioned, a lot of generalist advice such that we've imparted over the course of the last few minutes is almost universally helpful to solo players, but what it doesn't always shine the light on is how much more potent cards that deal with minions become in multiplayer. So if you have more friends than me, or you have a minion heavy scenario, then you might want to consider these cards as inclusions in your deck, while I make my way through the outro. And there you have it, two lists with a splash of do-it-yourself advice depending on the length and breadth of your collection. Honestly, don't get too hung up on obtaining every card. Yes, that's a bit trickier with the weapon deck for which I are sorry, but the event heavy deck you should be able to conjure up with whatever you have to hand. I do hope you found this video interesting and or helpful. Links to samples of both deck lists can be found in the description below. Stay tuned for similar videos covering the other aspects. Alas, I have been the voice in your head, and this video has ended.